Happy birthday. Come see right here. This is 45-year-old Paul Joseph Westwood, a man out of Millsburg, Ohio. Paul was arrested by police via a sting operation involving internet predators that took place in Bowling Green, Kentucky in 2007. He was exposed for messaging a fictional 13-year-old on MySpace and Yahoo for a total of four days. This is the police interrogation that resulted from the investigation launched against Westwood for crossing state lines to visit the sting house under the pretense of soliciting a minor home alone. I'm Catherine Reed. I'm an agent with the Kentucky Bureau of Investigation. This is Detective Tom Nischke with the Campbell okay. County Police Department. And uh, they read you your rights earlier and you know that you're under arrest. You're in custody. You're not going home tonight. Um, but we need to take care of some housekeeping issues first. But he did go over your rights, correct? Mm -hmm. And you understood them? Yeah. Okay. Can I have your home address first? How long have you lived there? Since January. I'm rooming with my sister right now. So is it her home? Yeah. Okay. Do you share the whole house? Or do mm -hmm. you live in a no, I, certain I, part of it? I share the house. I sleep in the basement. You sleep in the basement? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that where you do most of your living? Yeah. The majority of it? Does she come into the basement where you stay? Yeah, she has a craft room down there. But is it separated? Is mm -hmm. it one just big basement? How's that Yeah, it's separated out? by a door. My, I have a back bedroom. Okay, so there's a wall and a door mm -hmm. that makes it distinct from her craft room? Yeah. Okay. Um, we need to get a phone number for you. And you said you've been there since January. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said you lived in, in a house in a Monroe? Yeah. Okay. Is it like in a, like a subdivision or is it... I'm not... Um, Never been to Monroe, I couldn't tell. It, yeah, it, it's a subdivision of Monroe. Okay. Is it like a one story, two story house? or One story ranch. One story, one story ranch. Okay. You got all that? Yeah. So we're good to go. You have an emergency contact? Yeah, my sister. You want to give us her name and number? So you no longer live at this on your no, driver's license? Not since the end of 05. Okay. Pete, you know that uh, you're under arrest. We've already established that. Um, and I'd like to talk to you about your situation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have a side of your story and I know what I've seen, I know what I've read about, I've looked at the chat logs, um, and you came to Highland Heights to meet someone. Uh, and, I, I, but yeah. if you would like to talk to me about that, I would like to hear about it, but that's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. I can, I can uh, fill you in. Okay. Um, when I originally decided to, to do that, um, I was I was having second thoughts, and I was I had a I had a feeling. Um, I guess because I watched too many police shows. Mm -hmm. um, now you said when you originally decided to do that, what what are we talking about? Well, I originally decided to make the trip 
around five or six this evening. So I went, uh, I ran an errand, and I talked myself out of going, went back home, and I hooked up with her again. And on, online? On, yeah. Hooked up with who? Kylie. Kylie. Yeah. Um, and I decided to, I don't know, I don't know why I decided to uh, follow through on it. Okay. I, what? I, I should have, I've never done that before. You've never met anybody in a chat room? Well, I've met women in chat rooms, but mm -hmm. you know, I've, I have friends in the chat rooms who mm -hmm. are my age or a little, a little younger, but not that young. Not that young, yeah. being 13. Right, or under under 20. Uh, but they're all friends. Um, and, you know, that we've, uh, all I've done is, is talk to them. I've exchanged, with a few of them, I've exchanged phone numbers. And we've been, uh, talking on and off for months. Um, sometimes uh, I don't go into the chat room for a couple of days or a week because I'm busy and tired. Uh, on the weekends, sometimes I like to just relax and get on and chat with the friends of mine who are on there. And so where, where are you when you chat? In my room. At home, mm -hmm. the address you gave us. Yeah. In the basement. Mm -hmm. Do you have one PC to? One. Okay. You have a webcam. Mm hmm okay. Anything else that you use, like a PDA or Trio, no. so that you can stay connected? Everybody's connected these days. So. Just the cam and the computer. So is it a PC or a laptop? PC. <clears throat> and when you started, um, do you have, like go through like Yahoo to chat or what do you go through to chat? I mean, what do you go through to, to chat? Well, I go on uh, a uh, a MySpace chat room. MySpace chat. Um, the Ohio MySpace chat room. Um, that's where I've been recently. Um, Is that where you met Callie? Mm -hmm. Tell me how you found her. Tell you the truth, I'm not really sure. All I know is that I went into the Ohio chat room one night. And, um, Somehow we just struck up a conversation, and um, I exchange, we exchanged uh, instant messenger IDs. Um, I think, well, we didn't chat in private until we went into the uh, Yahoo uh, instant messenger, and then exchanged information. Um, You know, gave her my name and age. Um, she sees she seemed okay with it. Uh, as I said, I've never chatted with anyone uh, under in their twenties. Um, but but just, this time you were okay with her being thirteen. Yeah, it was just. Uh, First, it was regular, you know, regular chatting. Uh, we didn't really get uh, how can I put that? We didn't really get involved in s special chats. Mm -hmm. um, she mentioned that uh, she was with a boy two years older than she was. And, uh, told me how that went. 
if you ask her how that went. Mm -hmm. uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the specifics. All I know is, you know, I asked her how it went and how she liked it and um, what all they did together. And, uh, I just, I just don't know what made me want to follow through on it. Um, as I said, I, I left the house once and changed my mind, mm -hmm. and kind of wish I stayed with my gut feeling, you know. Yeah. So, what you, what did, what did you all talk, talk about before you planned on coming over to visit? You had, um, you had mentioned about the special talk. Yeah. You said that you didn't really have special chat in the beginning. What what special chat? Well, what I what I considered special chats is um, cyber, cybering. Pretending? Mm -hmm. Role playing? Yeah. So did you have any of those early on? No. Just not to my knowledge. Okay. What about before you came over? Uh, I basically, uh, when we when we set it back up, I basically asked her to wear a skirt. Um, she told me when we originally decided to meet, we were going to meet at the bowling alley across the street, and she told me what she was going to wear, told her what I was going to wear. Um, now there was a little more conversation than that prior to um, determining where you were going to meet about uh, kissing and hugging. Yeah, I was, I was, I was mentioning to her that I, I'm romantic. I'm, uh, I'm compassionate. <coughs> um, or I wouldn't mind k kissing her. You know, it's something I've never done. All right, it went beyond that as well. Yeah, I, I don't re remember what I said to tell you the truth. Um, do you chat a lot? Do I chat a lot? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, with with women my own age or, or in the neighborhood. So you have a lot of cyber chat where you role play and you talk about sex. Yeah, with, with women over 25. Well, let's talk about specifically what you said to her since you don't remember. Police recorded an 11-minute phone call of Westwood talking with the decoy on the phone, where he confuses the person he is talking to for an astonishing six minutes. He opens up with mentioning talking with her and her mother on the phone last night, but that the call ended prematurely over a dead phone battery. This mistake, while simple on the surface, could allude to Westwood talking to other minors on the phone, and even talks about the child's mother agreeing to Westwood conversing with the kid on the phone. Is this by chance uh, Kylie I'm talking with? Yeah, I, Kylie. Okay, huh? It's Kylie. It, okay. Well, good. <laughs> that, uh, that's all that little mystery, and I am so sorry. Come on, it's, it's okay. Apologies, okay. Captain. Thank you. After Paul confirms who he is talking to on the phone with, they proceed to talk for another five minutes, where not much is talked about but Paul mentioning other people he has conversed with online. Westwood reportedly never talked with the decoy on the phone again, but this is maybe for the best, since Paul's conversation topics were boring and monotone. We just need some clarification. Just some clarification. That's all we're looking for is in I think you're, you're you're being honest with us, and that's yeah. all we're looking for. Trying to be, and you know, um, I just want to understand, you know, where where we were going with this. I don't. You know, and if you can explain it for me, then you mm -hmm. know, it makes things. I'm cool with it. He's cool with mm -hmm. it. I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm. 
I've never, I'm not saying I've never chatted before, you know, that's, that's a given. Yeah. But I've, as I said, I've never chatted with anyone under, I'll say 20, to be safe, okay. you know. Most of the women I, I meet are in their 30s and 40s. And it's just, you know, fun chat. And well, let's, let's uh, talk about this real quick. What uh, screen name do you go by? In Yahoo? Or in MySpace? Both. MySpace is Paul. Paul? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what my, uh, uh, that's what my MySpace ID is. Paul, just mm -hmm. P-A-U-L? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the Yahoo chat, or in the Yahoo Instant Messenger, it's uh, P Wood 11. But with, with a, with an underscore between Pete and Wood. This here, and this, this chat, that you? Yes. Okay. And this is the person you were talking with? Yes. Kylie, K-Y-L-E-E-L-E-E? -E -E -L -E -E? Mm hmm Okay, so you recognize that? Yeah. And... Do you remember when you started chatting with Kylie? Originally? Yeah. Probably in one to two weeks. Do you usually talk to somebody that long? That I long? I mean, yeah, over that amount of time, two weeks? Yeah. Okay. Um, some of my friends I, I chat with almost every night. So you consider her a friend? Yeah, I guess. You talk about in your chat that you're a lonely guy. What's that about? Well, I. You said I've, you've been living with your sister since January. Yeah. So. Well, I bring I've, me up to that point. Okay, I was married in one married for four years. Uh, we separated. She moved back in with her family. I moved to uh, Westchester. Um, and then I lived there for a year. And then uh, January of this year, I moved in with my sister. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I were very close for the for two of the four years, and we started drifting apart, and we're still friends, but we decided to separate. I'm in the middle of a divorce. I'm in the middle of filing for a divorce. Um, you filed? Yeah. I'm going to file. I've got the paperwork already. So you're separated, actually. Mm -hmm. We've been separated uh, a little over a year, um, but we're still friends. We still see each other. Sounds like you're uh, in between relationships. Basically. Okay. Uh, specifically, you you talked to Kylie about, uh, and you say special chat with you here on the phone while we're both alone. I'd love us to make each other feel good because I'm lonely tonight. Where were you going? With well, that? basically, a romantic chat. Okay. Do you recall having this conversation? Not word for word, but yes. Okay, tell me about it. Um, I just suggested that uh, um, we could get together and uh, cuddle on the couch, watch movies or watch TV. Um, I've told her on a few occasions that uh, that I am kind of lonely and. Uh, I don't have many friends. Uh, that's why I go into the chat rooms. Mm -hmm. And you know, I thought we could keep each other company. You think you would have wanted more? I don't know. I mean, you're lonely, I understand. A lot of things are on your mind, divorce, separation. Um, those, are, those are natural feelings. Okay. I, under, I understand. Um, do you think once you got up here cuddling and uh, being together, watching movies, do you think there could have been a point where possibly you could 
That went further. Well, I would try to draw the line at cuddling. Uh, <clears throat> in your chat, you specifically uh, told her that you'd like to have oral sex. So I probably would have went a little bit further. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And you graphically talked about how you would do that in her breasts. Um, You talked about staying the night. You talked about her being sexy in her nightgown. Um, that you'd be rubbing her thighs, uh, massaging and kissing her breasts. And then you talked to her about if she had ever gone down on a guy, um, the guy that she had been with. And then you talk about that this aroused you that you were ready to masturbate, to ejaculate from, from the conversation. So you did expect to have something happen when you went to the house? Yeah, but I don't know what would have happened. I would have just played it by ear. But your intention was to have sex tonight, or oral sex. If it went that far, yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, did you bring anything with you? Anything special with you? Uh, bring any movies or um, anything with you tonight? No. Okay. Just just that bag of pop. Okay, bag of pop. Was that for you? Or did did you mention you need to bring that? or No, it was for me. Okay. So were you going to stay the night? No, I wasn't. No? No. I had, I had made my mind up to, uh, to not stay the night. Okay. What made you change your mind about that? In the chat, you indicated that you would spend the night. Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking about it coming down here, and um, I'm involved... I'm actively involved in my church, and and I have uh, obligations to them. Um, so that would have made the difference. You could have came down here and had sex with her, but as long as you didn't stay the night, it was right. okay. Well, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't planning to spend the night because I I had plans for tomorrow, anyway. To go to church. Mm -hmm. um, is there any in on your computer? I know you chat a lot, and you said nobody under twenty. If that was ever looked at, would there be anybody else around the age of thirteen, fourteen, on there that you chatted with? That somebody looked at it. Um, there's there's a few uh, around fifteen. And have you ever tried to meet them? <clears throat> no. Uh, how long ago was that? How long ago did I meet him? Yeah, yeah, how long? At least a year. Okay. And what'd you guys talk about? Just normal stuff, sports, school, okay. activities. Did you get into a little bit of the cybering too? Not with not with most of them. But you did with some of with them. With some. Um, it was the same type of talk that you had here with uh, Kylie. I think it's how it's but Basically the same, yeah. Okay. Um, on your computer, at your, at your place there, uh, there isn't any type of pictures of minors or anything on there, is there? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. You don't, do you visit any type of, you know, um, fairly legal or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Underage, any type of websites or anything like that that you're aware of? No. Okay, I, so nothing like that would be, would be on there? Mm -hmm. 
Something very particular happens when Paul is questioned about his internet usage and saved data. He gets asked by Detective Nishki if he has any saved images of minors on his computer, which Paul replies, not that I'm aware of. This type of response usually is a symptom of deception, where the suspect does not want to outright admit a definitive no, but instead settles with the less direct answer. An answer where they don't have to outright lie, nor admit to any wrongdoing, but instead plead to ignorance on the matter. Paul also shows signs of self-comforting behavior, a result of having to lie, but we'll get our answers soon enough. What about, you said you had a webcam, have you ever exchanged any explicit photographs or uh, any pictures of you masturbating or while you're cybering? Have no. a more interactive situation where you can see them and they can see you? Not with uh, minors but it may be on your computer. I'm not sure. I, I Photographs understand. of you through the web. Oh, um, it might be, I don't know. You know. All I know about that webcam is that it's just a live feed. Okay. It doesn't save any still pictures. Okay. But have you exposed yourself? I mean, just how you're anything? Not like to that? minors. Okay, not to minors, okay. No. Have you ever sent any uh, pornographic pictures to other adults? To other adults, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the other friends of mine. Okay. Are these men, women? It's women. Okay. So you term them as friends? Mm-hmm. Okay. What um, sets them aside from someone who you may be interested in having a relationship or are you interested well, in all at any given I time? I am interested in one specifically for a potential relationship. We've been, she lives in, in uh, Oklahoma um, and we basically talk every night, not online, but we talk every night. We've, we've chatted on her nights off. Mm -hmm. now, um, in this particular chat with Kylie, uh, there you referred to another person that you were chatting with. Do you remember who that was? Yeah, yeah. she's she's 19. Um, her name is her name is Brenda. Is that her screen name, or is that her name that she's? Well, I believe with? it's her her name, because okay. she al she also uses it as her screen name. Just Brenda? Mm -hmm. No numbers? Or no. And that's a 19-year-old you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. From Oklahoma? <clears throat> no. Uh, that one is a 47-year-old. Okay. Um, so you don't discriminate as far as how old or young they are? No. <clears throat> I'm going to be right back in a minute. Is there a chance I can get a glass of water? Yeah, I'll take care of that for you in a few minutes. Um, go ahead. Well, I'm just wanting to know what's uh, what's going to happen from here. Well, at this point, um, we're going to write up your citation and we're going to get you transported to the local jail um, and then they'll process you there and then you'll have an arraignment and they'll set your bail, I don't know that it may be Monday before that happens or later. So you're going to be spending the night at least. Um. So will I, well, will I be able to, well, the two main questions I have is, am I going to be able to attend church tomorrow, and am I going to be able to go back to work on Monday? You're not going to be going to church tomorrow. Okay. I can, I can um, live with that. I don't know about work. That's going to depend on when you're arraigned and when your bail's set. Mm -hmm. 
so I, I can't make any promises on that. Okay. Um, That's an unknown right now. One of my most important questions. I know I know I did something wrong. Okay, I admit that. You admit that you yeah. came to see a 13-year-old and have sex with them. Yeah. Uh, and I feel I feel bad about it. I can't explain it, but I I know I did something wrong. And uh, what I'm driving at is um, is my sister going to be notified about this? Um, not unless you tell her. Okay, so you have no reason to bring my sister into this. No, um, we'd like to take a look at your computer if you wanted to give us consent to do that. Um, you know, we does it have to be at that at the residence, or can I bring it somewhere for you guys to do? Well, what you you're going to be in jail, so you know we would have to uh, be able to get access to that computer. You know, are you the only one that uses the computer? Or does your sister no, use it that, as well? No, that computer is mine. She okay. has her own. And it's in your room? Yeah. On the basement level mm -hmm. of the house? Mm hmm And you say she has a computer? She has her own laptop that she uses. A laptop? Yeah. And where does she keep it? On the first, on the main floor. Either in her office or out in the living room. Um, what I was driving at is it, it seems that she is going to find out because if you have to have access to the computer, uh, you have to go to the residence to do it. Right. Well, uh, there's different ways to deal with this. And, I mean, if you want to cooperate, you know, and give us consent to look at your computer, you know, we'll gladly take your consent to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I'm, I'm trying to kind of build my life back again. You know, I know this is a big setback. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough for yeah. you. But you're doing the right thing. But I mean, but you're facing it head on and, you know, that's the way to deal what with I'm, things. What I'm wanting not to do is have to explain any of this to my sister. I'm not trying to keep anything from her, but I'm trying to turn my life around. I'm trying to uh, recuperate from my divorce and uh, get on my feet financially and otherwise. Mm -hmm. Why? Are, why are you fearful for your sister to Be, find out? Well, I, I'm trying to. You know, I'm getting back into church, and she's. We're, she and I are bonding now, and we usually we never did bond before. Mm -hmm. and we had a we had a hard life, and uh, if I, I think I'm I think I'm going to lose her love and her trust if she finds out what I did and why I did it. That's that's kind of why I was. You know, I can't promise you that she's not going to find. Yeah. You know, that's a part of you having to deal with moving forward and yeah. and dealing with that. I, I can't promise you. Yeah, but uh, like Agent Rita said early on, you, you, there's two routes you can come in here. You can sit here and tell us nothing and just be hardcore, or you can take the route you've taken and say, "Okay, I made a mistake. I, I can only I can only go up now." And that's what you're doing. You're taking, you know, you're, you're being open about it. And that's, to me, that, that means, that means a lot. And, um, you know, you know, you're heading straight forward. You're being with, up front with us. And it, that's, you know, a lot of times we don't get that. That, that speaks volumes for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know you're active in the church and I know you want to get your life around. And it sounds like it's like some, some of it's work for you. Because, I mean, you got in here and, and said ah, this or that, um, but like Agent Reed says, I we can't tell you that you're, you're it's not your sister's not gonna know. I mean, I mean she's obviously gonna 
find out when you don't come home yeah. that something's up. Well, she's going to have questions for she, you. She's right. She's busy this weekend. She's not expected home until sometime tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Yeah. But. Do you have any kids? Did I miss that earlier? No. So you don't have any children? Does she? No. Okay. So, um, go ahead. Well, as I said, she won't be scheduled home until tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, and as you said, there's probably no way that she will not find out. Uh, I just don't know how I'm going to explain it. Yeah. You know, I can't. I can. I can tell her I was arrested, and she, if she asks what for, I'm going to have to tell her the truth. I can't. I don't want to lie. Yeah, to that's your call. That's yeah. your call, and and you're going to have time to think about it before she gets back. Um, you know how you're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, and. Did you have a cell phone or anything with you when you no, came? No, I don't have a cell phone. So you don't own a cell phone at all? No. And your, your PC down in the basement with you, that's the only PC? Is there another PC in the house? That's, well, the other one's my sister's, but this is the only one I use. Okay. I don't, I don't so it, there's a laptop that uh, she uh, keeps upstairs? She keeps upstairs. Yeah. Okay. I don't use, I only use my, my PC. Now, is there a separate entrance to the basement that you use, or do you... No, it goes upstairs into the kitchen. So you have to come in where to get to your I room? I come in through the garage. Through the garage? Into the kitchen and make a, make a turn and go right downstairs. Okay. Well, um, I guess the biggest thing is, uh, I guess regarding your consent, I guess uh, your, which way you're on, so we kind of know which way to go with you. I mean, if you feel like you want to consent to uh, Regarding, you know, checking everything out, verifying everything, uh, she has a form. It's up to you if you want to sign it or not. Uh, if you do, uh, she'll have you sign that you know if you're you want to consent up. Uh, she'll have your you know, computer and stuff checked out. Um, if not, but that's up to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it is it gonna hurt my case if I if I refuse the consent? No, it's your, it's your right. It's your call. It's your call. I mean, consent, I'm if you want to say no, it's not going to change what we've talked about here. Mm -hmm. um, you've told me the truth. I'm, I'm cool with that. If you tell me no, I just take that blank paper back out the door. Or if you tell me yes, we'll sit here and we'll fill it out. You'll get to read it. You'll know exactly what it says and you know everybody will feel good about it and we'll have consent to look at the computer I mean that's your call um, I think I'm going to refuse the consent okay. Westwood mentions his place of residence is with his sister specifically taking an empty room in the basement where he sleeps and uses his computer KBI Detective Catherine Reed then proceeds to ask Paul for permission to seize his PC for evidence, wherein Paul contemplates but ultimately refuses. This was futile for Paul, as the agency obtained a search warrant for his computer that was later executed upon by the Kentucky Police Department. What they found was child pornography on his hard drive, which resulted in Westwood receiving additional charges when he was convicted on December 12th, 2007. That's, that's all it comes to, comes about. See, we're, we're not tough guys, we just, and girls, <laughs> we just want to find out what happened and, you know, go easy. Nobody's been mean to you or rude that I know of, so not that this is a good experience for you, but I hope that you can. I've learned it. And you can yeah. build off of it. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, I'll be stepping out. If you need anything, just let me know. Okay, I'll be out in a few minutes. It's Westwood. Mm -hmm. um, another question mm -hmm. I've, I've got, and so I know what's going to happen. Um, 
when all is said and done and, and all this is processed, uh, am I going to lose my truck? Um, you know, they will... That's um, the best, best way I can ask. They will take your vehicle to a secure location. Um, and at that point, you know, once you get out of jail, you can make arrangements to uh, see what the plan is with your vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure at this point how that will be addressed. Mm -hmm. But once you get out of jail, you can ask them about your vehicle, and they'll um, give you that information freely. Okay? All right. And you go by... Paul, you said on MySpace, right? Is mm -hmm. that... Mm -hmm. Do you use any other nicknames or alias? No, just Paul. Okay. And can you give me your address one more time? phone number. Okay, and that emergency phone number. Okay. You're a non-resident of Kentucky. Marital status? Separated. <laughs> okay, is the information on your ID here, height, weight, all that correct? No, I'm height, 5'10? Five, 5'10, ten. Five, ten, and I weigh 216. Hair color brown. Okay. And eye color hazel. Social Security number. And where are you employed? And that's where? Uh, Westchester. Is that one word or two? Two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you ever use a computer there? No. And so you gave them your vehicle information as well, right? Yeah.
What shift do you work at the distribution? Second. <laughs> 
you've never been convicted of a crime. No. Well, I mean, that's most likely going to work in your favor. I don't know that you would be released on your own recognizance, but that would be for a judge to decide. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, sounds like you got some stuff going for you. You've cooperated with us here. You know, you got some arguments that you can make, I'm sure. Okay? Okay. Any other questions? Do you know how much longer it'll be? Well, I'm hoping not long. I was just making a copy of the citation and getting ready to call the jail to send somebody over for you. All right. So, um... Um, what can I do about making... I'm not worried about the phone call for tomorrow, but I'm, I'm worried about how I'm going to contact my boss at work. Um... That's something you'll have to make arrangements through the jail okay. to make phone calls. Can I can I talk to them tonight about it? The jail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, the officers that transport you, if they're from the jail, um, you could probably ask them. They may be able to tell you something. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything good? Well, it's hard to tell right now. Okay. But, I mean, you're okay. Yeah. All right. We're getting ready to take you in just a second, okay? All right, Mr. Westwood, ready to go? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and stand up. Can I take this with me? Yeah, you're going to step outside this room here, and they're going to get you ready to go. Will I be able to use the restroom somewhere? Um, they'll take care of that whenever you get to the jail. Unless you need it. Go now. Do you, do you need to use the restroom now? After his arrest, Paul Westwood was held on a $100,000 bond. Paul was initially charged in federal court in the Eastern District of Kentucky with a federal felony count of traveling with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. After the discovery from his seized computer, Paul was further charged and convicted in Ohio with a felony count of pandering sexually oriented matter involving a minor. The Ohio sentence landed him with three years in prison. But while serving his sentence in Ohio, he received an extra 51 months in prison for the federal charges in Kentucky. In addition, upon his release, he was assigned a 20-year term of supervised release and registration as a sex offender. Paul is now listed as a sexual predator in Ohio, meaning he has a high risk of reoffending and is required to update his status to the police every 90 days for the rest of his life.